What's up, man? Grand Theft Auto The Ballad of Gay Tony is a GTA 4 expansion DLC released on October 29, 2009, just one year after its main game and DLC counterpart, The Lost and Dam. The game is a stark contrast from GTA 4 and The Lost and Dam. It showcased the glitzy high life of the elite and wealthy in contrast to the dark and depressing vibe of its predecessors. It introduced a whole new arsenal of weapons and vehicles for players to use. This game also introduced many features which will end up in GTA 5, and overall the game just had a much brighter and glamorous tone to it, a tone which would also be reused and perfected in GTA 5. In many ways, this game was the basis for what we got in GTA 5. Tanks, high-tech weapons, you name it, and it's all there. Today, I'll be taking you guys on a journey through some of the missions together, and we will explore the genius of the Ballad of Gay Tony. take these rookies downtown. Are you with me? The Ballad of Gay Tony timeline actually starts in the middle of the original GTA 4 timeline on the mission Three Leaf Clover. If you remember correctly in that mission, there was a dude on the ground. He was talking about how he was in the Glen Club or whatever, and you seen that little Mexican dude next to him. Well, it turns out that dude's name was Luis Lopez, and he's the main character for the Ballad of Gay Tony. This scene goes down the exact same way. Hacky going on his long tangent spiel to the crowd, St. Michael getting shot, them shooting the fuck out of Mr. Hero, and finally, Next, after he gets to leave the bank, Luis is seen speaking with an officer who is requesting that Luis divulge any information that he knows about the bank robbers. But I ain't no fucking snitch, so I'm just gonna go ahead and toss that card out. I really love this intro that they show for Luis. Every single character in GTA 4 has their own little intro to the game, and I really like how they tried to blend Luis as like, you know, this regular guy. He's just this pedestrian walking down the street. But really, Luis is like one of the most, if not the most, pivotal character to the story of GTA 4. Spoilers for what I'm about to say next but if you remember correctly louise was the one that shot up the museum that one mission literally changed the entire course of the two other gta games next louise gets on the phone with somebody named tony and he tells him that he needs to get his ass up because he's on the way over we also get this cool neat little nico bella cameo here shouldn't he be running from the cops this nigga over here stopping at lights and shit louise i know you want to talk to that bitch bro just go over there fuck this nigga tony if he come answer the door tell him to hold on a minute game is game brother when i get to his crib this man tony is is bitching about his life off rip as soon as I walked in the door. He's complaining about how the nightclub scene isn't what it used to be. His gay lover wants more money from him. And apparently some nigga named Troy don't want to work the gay club anymore. Then we find out this man Tony was doing cocaine with a 17 year old named Chloe Parker for some reason. But I get it though. Rockstar's just trying to show us, you know, how fucked of a situation these two are in right now. We get a nice glimpse of our two different personalities here. Tony, energetic, bouncing off four walls, crazy as shit, and Louise peace calm cool and a lame ass temp fade on the top of his head next we're introduced to our rock star ritual asshole rocco and i don't really care what his partner's name is these two lamos are not even worth introducing so basically all they came for was to collect some money that tony owed them but we got bigger fucking problems to deal with so we had to head out next we got to get in tony's nice at god damn what type of car is this this shit nice as hell we get our first objective of the game drive tony to hercules we pull up to the club and hey there really go that nigga who wanted to shift change tony tells him that there's a top secret vip guest coming tonight so he needs to be on his fucking a game little dude tries to get out you know a request or whatever but we don't got time for that let's go to the next location next we had to drive tony to mason at nine and uh you can't get through one car ride without this nigga complaining about the nightclub business thankfully we arrived soon and it's time to get my club on as we head into the club tony tells luis he has a few phone calls to make he wants luis to go downstairs and work the floor hey it's no bullshit in Ah. We're going straight business. Anybody's fucking around on the club floor, they get kicked out. I ain't playing. Looks like everything's in order here. Looks like everybody's having a good time. No, no shots tonight. Straight business. Hey, keep your hands to yourself, buddy. Ugh. 
No bitches, just work. I'm serious, pal. I'll kick you out of here faster than you can say. What's up, though? I'm told one of your friends is causing trouble out front. Can you go help Desi? You know who it is? I don't know anything about it, but take care of it, Luis. No nonsense. Well, I guess I should head outside and take care of this business. Well... Maybe I got time for a drink or two. Man, fuck that shit. I deserve this. Dealing with these assholes all day and night. Hey, serve me up, Troy. Okay, I'm gonna just have one drink just to get a little buzz. And it, it... Let's party! Do you come here often? I'm so hard right now. You'll never be able to drink as much as me, bro. <laughs> Don't waste that champagne, nigga. This is the greatest night in my life. Uh, somebody help me. Help me. Ah, uh, you, you son of a bitch. Ah, uh, so you looking at my girl's ass. Oh shit. Ooh, that was a serious day of work. Now it's time to head outside and see what the fuck Tony was talking about. Damn, that phone call feels like it was years ago. Why you laying your hands on me like that, man? Luis is my boy. Yo, Luis is his Half boy. the people in here say Luis is their boy. The girls all say they're fucking him. I don't care if you're his damn mother. You ain't coming in. Not in them clothes. Not with that attitude. <laughs> Good one, Rena Thug. Yo, I don't know who these two are, but they're annoying as shit, and they have no fucking drip. That's a double crime. Basically, these two was arguing with the bodyguard because they can't get in because of that terrible drip. Then Tony comes over and tells me my drip is ass and that I need to go take a shower. So now it looks like I'm rolling with the three stooges. The three stink cholos. Now we gotta take these two dumbasses back to the heights. Hey, I'm glad this man Tony gave me 24-7 access to this car because this shit nice as fuck. Saves me the trouble from having to steal one from a grandma. We dropped them off at their crib, and now it's time to head back and watch those stanky pits. This is Louise's apartment. Sleeping on the bed will save the game in advanced time by six hours. You can use the wardrobe to change clothes. We finally completed the very first mission of GTA, The Ballad of Gay Tony. And this is also what I was talking about earlier when I said this game was low-key the basis for GTA 5. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm 99% sure this was the first Rockstar game to introduce this little in-mission task screen with the percentages or whatever. And what other game did they use that in? Exactly. I had to get out of that weak ass starter outfit. Then Luis gets on the phone with Tony and it's just a little checkup call, nothing important. So we're gonna go ahead and move on. For some reason, this man Tony texted me like 30 seconds after the call. Don't know why he didn't just, you know, tell me to come over on the phone, but it looks like we have to head over and see what's going on with this man. After a near-death experience, I'm hungry. Yes, let's go get a burger. Let me get the, uh... Let me get the, uh... uh mm, 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 mm. <coughs> Shit, puss. For the second time, we arrive at the club, and we start our first official mission. Chinese takeout. We're greeted by Rena Thug at the entrance. Don't dap me up, little nigga. And Tony heads down to the dance floor. When we get down there, is that Roman and Brucey? Oh, hell no. What the fuck are they doing? But look at these women, bro. They look scared as shit. Tony walks into a portal to his right that ends up in Tony's office. He's on the phone with somebody else that he owes money to. Somebody named Maury? I don't fucking know. But all Tony says is that he needs Louise help, so we gotta go. But on our way out the club, we run into the Fucking man, the myth, the legend, Yusuf motherfucking Amir. But he's not important right now, so let's go. We're headed down to the Dragon Heart in Chinatown. On the way over, Tony gives us a fucking P90. It says the reason we're headed to Chinatown is because Rosco, Rosco, fucking Rocco, the dumbass, asked us to talk to somebody. Tony owes him money, and apparently Rocco has a connection to one of the big mafia families in the city. So it looks like we're gonna have to play ball in Chinatown. We witness Billy, the gang leader from the Lost and Damn timeline. But this nigga's fucked up, yo. He says hella crazy shit like, <laughs> that's right, I forgot. You little yellow people are commies too, huh? And then, you know, I grew up watching your kind 
getting killed on the TV. And then he tries to scare Tony and Luis. You better keep walking, nigga. I'll beat your ass. After Billy Bitch walks away, the random Chinese thug says he needs us to straighten things out with the licensing department for the building. But me and Tony, we don't know how to do that shit. We just run in piss so poor shitty right clubs now. in the city. The Chinese thug tells Lewis and Tony that they are in no position to be making demands and that they have to do this for them. Yeah, really? Dumbass prick. You thought we were finna. Oh shit, they're coming for us. That shot set off a militia of Chinese niggas up the stairs. So now me and Tony have to fight our way through the building to get the hell out of here. Nigga, this is finna be the toughest escape of all time. They about to be fucking kicking me in my neck and shit. We made our way through several rooms of these dudes. And this crazy ass nigga right here busted out the wall like Jack Baker or some shit. Finally, after almost reaching the exit, I see the door. Freedom! I knew I was gonna make it out of this building alive this time. I cleared several more floors of douchebags, all while Tony was behind me spitting clever, witty quotations. And finally, after spraying the last dude's guts against the wall, we escaped from Chinatown. We escaped with our balls intact and our mental state in disarray. Man, Tony, hurry your ass up, bro. We gotta get the fuck out of here. It smells like Kim Sung ass around this bitch. We finally get back to Tony's crib. And I forgot to mention earlier that Rocco was the one that set up this whole meeting in the first place. How come every time I do one of these videos, we initially get introduced to some douchebag scumbag? When I catch Rocco, I'm gonna kick the shit out of that nigga. Anyways, we got Tony back to his crib safely, so that's an official mission done for the game. God damn, that took forever. Next, I checked the map, and I seen we had Mom's house on there, so... Uh, this is gonna be bad, isn't it? Hello. Tommy! What's happening, man? Who's this? Hey, those conversations are usually Tony's department. Uh, Mr. Tony gave me your number. There are some other matters I need to discuss before we get down to the real shit. Hey, if Tony gave you my number, then it's okay, bro. Great! Come hang out at my apartment. It's right on the middle park. Prime location. One of the most exclusive in the city. Top dollar shit. You'll love it. Yeah, Alright, I'll be by sometime. Just don't wait up. When we get to mom's house, she's pimping herself out to another temp cut fade nigga? Just kidding. Turns out some lame ass nigga named Mr. Santo, and he's loan sharking my mom. Basically, he gets disrespectful and says that Luis needs to help him pay back his mom's debt. Otherwise, he's gonna burn her building down. Lame ass nigga, you are not that dude. Anyways, we gotta go help pay back her debt, so let's go temp cut fade nigga. I could shoot you right now, bald ass nigga. While walking with bro, we find out that Luis used to be an underground street fighter back in the day, and to pay back his mom's debt he wants Luis to fight again basically all he wants Luis to do is win two fights in a row and on the third fight he wants him to take a fall this nigga want me to pull a motherfucking sunny listed Luis asked Santo hypothetically what would happen if you were to win all three fights and bro makes the lamest threat ever so yeah I'm not scared of this nigga time for your fighter to shine Santo get him changed that ringside you up kid we get this little introduction cutscene to the LC Cage fighters. Shit looks like something straight out of Bully Scholarship Edition. But we're about to face our first fighter and it's... What the hell are you supposed to be, nigga? A chef? Dropped his fat ass with these little three-piece combo to the stomach. Bring out the next fighter, man. That nigga was weak as fuck. Man, what the hell? He looks sorrier than the last dude. Hey, yo, you gay as hell. Last but not least, we're facing this homeless ex-commando looking ass man. Now, if you remember, we're supposed to lose this fight, but I ain't going out like that. What the fuck? You know how much money I had on that fight? Are you too fucking stupid to know when to lay down? Guess I must be. You're a fucking dead man. I'm gonna burn that bitch mom of yours too. Y'all don't think you are, tough guy. This little game's over for you. Oh no, he's about to kill me. <sighs> Time to go get something to eat. Shortly after saving her from thousands of dollars worth of debt and her building getting burned down, Louise's mom calls him to congratulate him on the win. I mean, criticize and scrutinize his ass for saving her. Man, these GTA moms are the worst. Maybe we should start killing them. <laughs> oh, hell no. Uh, take me to Middle Park, man. And then I turn 12. <laughs> what? Oh, we're here. Oh, thanks, man. The next mission we got on the list is sexy time. We walk into Yusuf Amir's crib. This nigga got the GTA 4. 
Four credits playing on the TV. He has a wow. solid gold model of the entire city. This nigga's cool as shit. Yusuf needs us to go get a helicopter so he can impress his dad. Really, so nigga? let's go get the fucking helicopter. We need a boat for the marina though. So let's get it. Hey yo, taxi. Hey bitch, watch out. The taxi drops us off the marina. I hop on a boat and let's head out to the yacht to get that helicopter. While I was on the way there, I got a message saying to avoid the patrol boat to not get caught, but I didn't see it. So uh. <laughs> Every last goon on that boat was alerted, weren't they? The little fucking patrol boat I was supposed to avoid pulled up on my ass and sprayed the shit out of me. Took off about like 75% of my health, so now this is a dire situation, brothers. I had to take this slow. Kill every goon one by one. What a fucking... Finally, after killing the last douchebag, I got on the chopper and see ya, bitches! Warning, missile lock detected. Motherfucker! Chopper took a little damage. You ain't gonna be able to give it to your dad. This is a shame. Ah, uh, this papa cannot be disappointed about the gift he knows nothing about. See you later, bro. Okay, I've been out bullshitting for way too long. I had to go pay another visit to my dude, Tony. In the next mission title, Practice Swing, we walk into Tony's apartment and he's freaking out. He's talking off four walls, talking about mayors, rivals, jugs, sex. Finally, he tells Luis he accidentally sold the club to two different parties and they both want a majority share of the pie. Tony tells Luis these people are not nice and there's a lot of them. And right now we gotta go play nice with one of them at the golf club to keep him from breaking our fucking legs. I'm guessing he didn't want to divulge the information that we're meeting Rock at the golf club. Shit, I hate that dude. He's upstairs on the driving range, douchebaggy as ever. He tells Lewis and Tony that he needs help interrogating a union official who's been running his mouth a little bit too much recently. Where is he at, you might ask? Down there. Fuck! <laughs> you fucking miss me, you piece of shit. Fucking prick. Yep, by far the goofiest GTA mission in any game. We have to hit golf balls down the driving range and hit the union official so that he'll give Rocco information. Four! <laughs> Shit, son of a bitch. Hole in one, nigga. God damn it. Oh yeah, that's on target. <laughs> Stupid motherfucker. Yo, where's this nigga going with the golf cart? Slow and steady, slow and st- Shit! Second try, bitch. Ha! What is this nigga doing? Just keep the golf cart in one place. It's gonna hurt all the same. Hole in one! Ooh, shit, right in the face. Any moment now, my protection's gonna show, and you guys are screwed. Yeah, yeah, shut up before we kill your ass. Oh damn, they killed that nigga Rocco. Yes. Ah oh, damn it. Now we were tasked with saving Rocco. We had to clear out several truckloads of these mafia guys and get down to the golf course where Rocco was at. Also, I accidentally uh, shot the union worker on the golf cart. I'm not entirely sure how that's gonna affect the mission. I cleared out all of the truckload of mafia guys, or at least I thought I did until. You're mine, ass white. Fuck out of here, little nigga. Now the chase was on. We hopped in the golf cart. We had to follow Rocco and get the fuck out of here. How the hell are we supposed to escape on a damn golf cart? But boy, was that golf cart moving. We busted around corners, drove past mini lakes, what? ruined a freshly cut lawn, destroyed several park benches, and finally after they crashed into a tree, we escaped. Now we had to meet Rocco at a safe place and discuss where we stand with Tony's debt. It had to be clear by now, all the shit we just went through, but unfortunately Rocco informs us that we barely made a dent in the debt. And he brung up the fact that Lewis killed that dude on the golf cart. Shit oh well, I don't give a fuck. Hey Tony, I'm telling you, we should just kill this nigga Rocco, he's not important to the story either. Anyways, after the whole golf cart ordeal, we have to take Tony back to his apartment. And on the way back, Tony and Luis have a very interesting conversation. Hey, you know, we're really warming to that guy. Like a back case of crabs. Crabs are easy to get rid of. Believe me on that one. Thank you for sharing. We're business partners. We share everything. The emphasis is on business, bro. You can keep your crabs to yourself. Sorry, man, but I really got us in the shit here, Luis. Tony, man, you gotta calm down. You're really pushing me. 
Yeah, well, if you weren't out chasing tail, and this is a two-man operation like it should be, then maybe things will be holding together better. Oh, I'm getting blamed for this now? Oh, of course. Whenever I come to the clubs, you ask me to run off on some stupid errand like a chump. You don't ever let me into the serious shit. And you do deals without even telling me. Until it comes time to protect your ass from whoever you got your fatwa of the day all from. All right, all right. Maybe I've taken you for granted. I'll change. I'll be better. Yeah, thank you. But I don't believe it. I really like these conversations that Rockstar threw into this game. You know, it's kind of like the, the Michael and Franklin dynamic that was in GTA 5. Regardless, I love the conversation and characters in this game, man. This is one of the better GTAs in my opinion. Now she might hurt me, she pretty, but fuck it That little hoe pee and I love it I fuck this hoe on the feet with his budget Still way too good for the touch Slime me and I'm on my 